In our next episode of the Army Painting Series, we're going to get down to the figures. In the first episode, we tackled the base and the process that's behind that. We talked about the footprint of the figure and balancing the colors of the base versus this figure. We talked about having some of this optic source lighting on here. We'll get to that later on in the figure. But what I've got, if you can see in the corner in the upper right and upper left, these are the colors that we're going to go for because some of you on the Patreon page already have a link to this painting Drow Elf skin tone. And we've got see this kind of a purplish gray here. You've got the light colored hair, kind of sea foam, and then that almost a greenish gold type armor. So I thought here we have plenty of this where we can do the greenish gold. We obviously have the same hair crests. We have the skin tone that we can match, but I thought down here, since this will be darker, maybe we do some, some patterns on this. And there's enough of these surfaces, again, where we can reflect some of that greenish light. And these are some of the colors we're going to use. I try to keep things simple. And this is in the cool range right here. So we've got a few secret weapons. We've got verdigree pale green. And I think that's verdigree blue. And this is my off-white that, that's on the cooler side. And then it's, it's mint green. There's ice blue. There's several colors that are really similar to this. It doesn't have to be anything specific. So that kind of takes care of our cool colors there. And then on the warm side, we got more reapers. We got the usual. This is my off-white on the warm side, the maiden flesh. We have clear yellow. Griffin tan. It's one that I use all the time. It's kind of my yellow ochre. And then Old Rust, it's kind of a deep red, also from Secret Weapon. And we have the collection of liners here. We've got blue, red, and brown. We've already used some of these in the base painting video. The one thing that's a little bit different is the fluorescent green, but we're going to get to that a little bit later in this particular video. And as usual, brush-wise, we've got our number eight rounds. And you can, as you can see, the difference, especially between these two, we've got something that's more of a pristine point. That one's a little bit more worn down. But now we've got almost a filbert-type brush. And as always, I usually have some of the brushes here. i got a few left in the case. You can see, five bucks comes in instead of twelve. These are from Hobby Lobby. I usually get them online. Even other craft stores, Michaels, that sort of thing, they'll have similar type brush sets. The palette is the usual palette paper, but a nine by twelve pad. The usual. We've got that right here. It's from Strathmore. The nice thing is that it's it's disposable. When I'm done with it, just rip it off, toss it out. So here again, we're going to do a shaded base coat thing first. Now, this is a little bit different than the old days of shaded base coat. And I'm going to take you over here to some of the original painting of the Dark Eldar. So you can see, look at this, a lot of the same similar colors. Might even bring out a rose color like that. Essentially, though, the maiden flesh and the red rust, we can make that color. Back here, you can see this is primed white, whereas this one's primed. It's got some pinks and blues in it. You can see a lot of the same colors, but these are all totally different. None of these, I think, except for the griffin tan and the maiden flesh, all these other ones are different. I think some of them are Vallejos, whatever. That's what I wanted to come across with. So can see here this is what we're going to start out with this is going to be kind of our sheet of base code as I go back to scene one you can see we're going to match that same same setup here so I'll go right back to my sheet of base coat then as we get to the glazing I don't have any of these anymore we're actually going to use our 
pretty much the colors you saw there and the liner paints because I just I didn't have those quite as much back in the day you can see here we got our glazing working we're working in the mid-tones and all of this this is all the stuff we're going to tackle here and I may refer back to this too when it comes time to paint the face because you can see how we're using the green to highlight the flesh and lighten that up as opposed to say the maiden flesh and that's what we ended up with so we're going to refer back to this when it's time this kind of covers some of the planning of figures because when you get into this and you're going to do more than just one figure you have to say what's feasible this gold is simple enough to where I think you can repeat it on several figures at once there's even almost probably no more gold armor on this than there is on the test figure now the bow maybe we don't do it I might do it a glinting metal I don't know we'll, we'll see what we're gonna do with that we've got probably yeah we can do a little bit of gold here on on this so we'll get into all of that and we'll cover that in the shaded base coat phase let's get the party started with the few basics out on the palette we got that mint green got that verdigris blue we have the old rust we have our griffin tan i'm just going to call it yellow ochre here get our that off white over here and what i've got is more of the filbert brush version of the craft brush and the idea is we're just going to plot out the colors on here just to see what we want where we're going to be starting out in the middle you don't want to get to that darkest color we want to get in the middle and work our way out from either side so what we're going to do is make sure that's on screen and this is not about painting in the line some of you might already be familiar with this whole shaded base coat thing from the old days and all the other blog posts and everything if not I'll, I'll kind of review some of the principles of it As you can see this is not the darkest color by any means it's also not the lightest color all I'm trying to do is get rid of the primer and that's that's what the shaded base coat is about you cover up that primer what you're just trying to do is get yourself a little bit of context so while we've still got this available here we're just going to throw a little bit of that mint green over the top we can come back to it later this is not supposed to be about blending here this is just to establish a little bit of lights and darks it's sort of like a pre-shading but instead of just white over say a gray or, or black or whatever it's, it's appreciating it with a color now let's I'm going to hit these here with some of the lighter tones and say I'm just I say well, I want to warm it up a little bit does not matter because all of this stuff is just going to get a glaze anyways just going to put a glaze over that tint it shade it darker no need to fuss or muss with that in fact I'm just going to grab a little bit of the red here the old rust because that's going to form part of our flesh tone and you wonder why I've got that out on the palette here well we need to form like you see in these images uh, point to the right to the left we're gonna make ourselves a flesh tone here it's got a we touch purple in it well that blue a little bit of that blue injected into the old rust I'm gonna shift that a little more towards purple but not a it's not a bright purple by any means and we're gonna throw it right here I, I tried not to familiarize myself too much with these sculpts actually I tried to 
as kind of assemble them and then forget about them so that when it came time to do this part it was as much of a voyage of discovery for me as it was for you you're also going to see as this part is kind of brisk and rough and violent this is why i'm not using those triple zeros first of all this would take a whole lot of time with a triple zero and you can see i'm being pretty pretty sturdy with this brush here just really whacking away at the figure here just hammering away at this I said okay so we've got some skin tone here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to throw a little bit of tiny tiny bit of light in there that's all just a little bit now let's get some skin tone here again it's n I don't have to worry about covering up the gold stuff because there's no gold stuff painted there yet. Just want to see what's what. If it hits the hair, it hits the hair. It doesn't matter. The hardest thing uh, people have when they're when they're just trying to work this technique into their own and adapt it to their own thing, they're used to that layering up from that darkest color to the lightest color, and, and it happens also daintily and gradually well this is there's no nothing dainty or gradual about this we're just gonna hammer away at it not be shy the whole idea is that this is almost kind of free yeah, I'm just gonna not even but I'm just gonna paint over that stuff don't even care it is not a big deal I'm just gonna paint right over that and I'm going to go even a little bit, tiny bit lighter. You can see I'm already starting to do a little wet into wet blending here. Do I want this to be a different color? I want this to be a lighter tone. So yeah, I'm going to actually put my Maiden Flesh out here because I don't want all of my color shifts to just be from kind of a warmer base to cooler. See, now look at how different that is. See, that's a little bit warmer, and you'll really see it when it hits this, because remember, we also wanted to contrast with that base. And this is what I like about the filbert dimension of this brush. See how it's already... Even now in the shaded base coat, this is a base coat, but we're starting to even right now introduce a few blends. Some of this might just be covered up, actually. And I just I wanted to see what that looked like, and that that's got some possibilities. It looks like that's on camera. Now some of this might also have a little touch of that green lighting on it. So let's hit the skin here go a touch lighter. You can see this this looks lighter. Now look at how different it is on the palette. It's it's really, really dark. But to some of you already probably in your in your own eyes it's registering as a light. And that's that's what I like about the shaded base coat is it leaves me at the shaded base coat we're working if you say one is the lightest ten is the darkest we're pretty much working from say four to seven so we've we barely touched a third really of what's available so that means the rest is all available to us not just in terms of what's lighter what's darker but what's warmer and what's cooler because you can see how much warmer this is paint this in here you can see that's got a warmer touch to it and this is not dry brushing I'm just kind of feathering that if I take a little more water to it so I kind of like the f secret weapon paints now I've got my flat soft filbert brush here flat soft filbert brush like so on the arm on the face we can just kind of 
keep marching along here. And some people say, well, that's not a base coat. You're, you're painting. Well, it, it's a little bit of each. And uh, yeah, it, it's something that you don't, you don't have to follow this exactly by any means. All of this, all of this is supposed to be is giving you some ideas, some possibilities that you mess around with on your own. You either incorporate or don't. You don't have to. See, this is more of just the red rust. So even at this point, I'm starting to think, how can I shift some of this color? Let's, let's do some of that here. So what I might do is have a little bit of a pattern here. And it's not going to, I'm not going to do too much with it again. This is still just the shaded base coat. All right. There's some parts of this that may not show up on camera. So there may be parts of this that I just do off camera later on. Like down in here, like in there, you can't really see much of that. Even this is going to be tough for you to see. Especially in here, that's going to be very tough to see. It looks like, yeah, it looks like I placed that just about right. So let's do a little bit more of this warmer tone here. And you can see how this is starting to emerge, but again, nothing, nothing super bright, nothing set in stone. What? Uh, pfft, no pun intended with the whole Medusa thing. You know, although this is obviously it's not supposed to be Greek mythology, Medusa, whatever. And this this is a way. Now, if I was to do just one of these, I would probably get really, really elaborate with the scales and everything. But this is also about unit painting. As soon as you get into unit painting, now you get into what's possible. Just how much time do you have to spend on this? How much time you're willing to spend on each figure? Because I'm guessing for an army in this system, you're going to need between 20 to 30 miniatures at least, if not more. And as soon as you get into that amount, well, you better be able to replicate that color scheme fairly quickly. And see this again, I'm not getting too involved here. I'm just saying do I how light do I want this to go, but not too light. I just want to indicate where I want those lines to go. But see it's a little bit warmer than this is. So that's easily enough, but before I get too wrapped up in scales and markings and all that, we we have to get to that gold. And while I still have the red here, I'm going to get some of that into my yellow ochre color. Let's get some armor on this. Because we need to see what this is going to look like. Because this is so, as you can see by the, the reference pictures on the right and the left, this is pretty intense. It's pretty pretty light. And since it has that greenish tint to it, it's really going to pop away from really going to pop away from all of these warmer colors, uh, all of these reds and purples and everything else. So that gauntlet looks gold. I think I'm going to say that's gold. I'm going to say that's gold. See, uh, that's like a, a snake here. I'm going to actually make this I'm going to make this bow maybe some kind of gold here or or maybe some kind of verdigris effect on that. Yeah, maybe that's a plan. Again, I I did not even I put these things together and I had no idea that this was some kind of snake bow 
here some kind of magical thing. So we're going to try and make it seem magical and not just like a piece of wood. All right. And again, if this some of the, sometimes this ends up going a little bit off camera, it's just because I need to be able to get my hands in certain places with this with the brush and everything else. You can see how this is starting to starts to take shape. I'm gonna hit that too find where else. I don't know if that's so much armor as a strap there. I'm going to say that's more. I'm going to hit this whole quiver. Hit that whole quiver there. See my rest of this this headdress over here. Is there anything else? Oh, there's another little gauntlet thing here. There's a hilt over here. Yeah, I'm just going to hit all this stuff with it. The heck with it. All right, so it, what people can't get used to is, is this whole idea that it kind of looks like an unholy mess. And that, that's the toughest thing. So here's that clear clear yellow. And, and as I add this in, then the golds are going to look a little bit more like the, the pictures you see, the, the kind of reference pictures. So let's get in here, and this is going to be some, like a sneaky non-metallic metal exercise, I suppose. It's stealth non-metallic metal. It's obviously, when I do my figures, it combines usually object source lighting, non-metallic, reflected stuff, glowing stuff. It's, it's never just, here's a miniature that shows this one thing. Because uh, when I do stuff, it tends to have all of the different effects combined. And here, see, I'm gonna take away a little bit of the paint. And y even though I'm calling this a base coat, as soon as I did there, I just hit that top section. And then here, I'm gonna do the opposite. Hit more on the bottom section. So here's the that bow. I'm gonna find some of the lights. Leave the darks. Again, I'm just just attacking this. If I want to take some away, I can use a sponge. You can use my finger. There's lots of lots of ways to skin that particular cat. Oh, the hilt. I almost forgot that. And I don't know how. Yeah, looks like you can still see. If I hold it at this angle, you can see that fair amount right there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep getting lighter. Just going to build this up a little bit lighter. With each each set of this, we'll do a little more clear yellow. Oh, forgot that gauntlet over there. You can see I'm already starting to think about horizon lines or starting to think a little bit about reflected light on metals here. Even though we're going we're gonna to do glazes over this. Up here on the top of the head crest, switch it over here. Looks like you can see there. Yeah, I'm just working on the bottom of that, on that side. Thinking about reflected light here. Remember when we were working on our bases? You know, we had these mounted on a dowel rod. See how I can do this? You know, I can rest my hand on top of this hand, and both elbows are on the table. Because people, they'll ask, well, how can you do all this stuff, A, for so long and so steady? Well, both of my elbows are solidly on the table. My hands, solidly get. I've got easy access to the miniature, though it may not look so much like it on camera, who knows. And I've got my magnifier light. So as, as I'm painting this, it's almost kind of as big as what you're seeing on the screen. Now let's get a few more of these lights in here. 
And, and you notice at no point have I touched white yet, and I have no intention to. That is, that's sort of one of those little things you, you only mess around with at the very end, because as soon as you go white, there's, there's nowhere you can go that's lighter. If you keep it off the table, keep it off your palette. The temptation is not there. Besides, we remember we have our off whites, and you'll find when you mix in the maiden flesh with this clear yellow, it'll make it that much brighter. And again, we're, it's not about reaching all those super bright highlights. We're just marking things off here. This is by no means anything permanent. When, when you're doing metals also, you want to reflect as much of the environment around it as possible. So that's why we use the colors that are already have, we've used in other sections. Because that's, that's one way to keep that, that color unity, color harmony. You hear me talking about that all the time. So now we've got, see we're starting to get some contact. What is the brightest light? All of a sudden everything here that was so light on, on the skin looks a whole bunch darker. And before I get too too far along on golds, we're going to go back to that hair. Now that the hair is dry, it's going to kind of solidify my Look how much lighter that is. I'm actually going to darken it down a little bit here. And just like I did on the golds, doing the same thing on the hair. And again, the this contact that looks like it's almost white, but it is by no means white. By no means whatsoever is that white. The advantage of this big brush, see how I'm almost working on the side of the brush here. Let's, yeah, you can pretty well see that. See how just plenty of paint on the brush. But I've got the brush almost at a sideways angle. See how it just picks up the top of that, the ridges of hair. It's all we need at this stage because remember that the rest is, we, we've got glazing to do here. Plenty of glazing to do. So see here where the purple hit the, the hair. Oh, that's gone. That's why I just I wasn't sweating that wasn't sweating that issue at all. So the other thing I like about having on the dowel rods, and I can practically turn it upside down and get the brush into an optimal angle and position. Let's add touch more of our off-white cooler color here. Yeah, what do we got? Yeah. And if that ends up being too much, say I'd knock off a little bit from the brush, I can wipe a little bit away. But this filbert brush shape, I can even sort of shape the brush into what I need. And you can see it's starting to bring out more of the individual strands at this point. And we're we're getting close to being ready for the glazing phase. This shaded base coat phase had a little more to it because there's there's a little bit of a pattern here. I'm just trying to get these feathers. I'm gonna put out my that clear yellow. And even at this stage, I'm gonna actually use some of that off white to highlight or to lighten that, sorry, not a highlight, because I, I wanna see look at how that's already giving that a little more sparkle because it's got 
that that's cooler against a warm. And when we get into this bow here, when we do some of the, the glazing on that, we'll do some really fun, almost greenish type glazes on it. See, here we'll just... One of the reasons I'm using the blue to highlight that is, remember, color unity, that whole notion of taking the colors that you've got and making sure that those colors end up just about everywhere. On the top of our cobra bow here. Back to this uh, quiver with the scabbard attached. So we've, we've established pretty quickly, this is basically about 23, 24 minutes. We've got a pretty good overall shape to all this. And again, we have we have glazing that we can do. There's so many more options open in in the next couple of stages. But by keeping this simple with only a few colors, you know, look at how dramatic of an effect we've been able to get with just these few colors. So here I'm, the plan is to kind of have a light edge next to a dark edge. It's, it's a pretty simple, pretty simple pattern to follow. It's because I don't have, I don't want this to be a 16 hour tutorial for you. That might be a little, little too much for you to try and absorb all at once. So trying to keep this in a manageable amount to digest, but still try and give you as as much of as much of the information as I can. Work in a little bit lighter. So here, let's see, we got this. Over here, and I'm just going to have that marking stop. I'm not going to have it cross over because I, I did that on some other snakes, and that was interesting. But I, I think on here I would rather just have this be its own, not have markings on it. Because if it does, see, then it starts to compete with all this. You know, you got all this pattern out here. You don't want that to be fighting with the face and everything else. So so here it's a matter of some actually some simplification. Kind of intentional simplification. So here I'm even trying to get some lights on the face. So that's about it for your shaded base coat. Now here I was trying to figure out what all the colors were going to be. When you're doing yours you might have a little better idea now, if we were to hit some of the other ones, let's grab one here. You can see the difference straight away. We establish kind of what we want to be gold, where the highlights are going to be, color of the hair, some of the contrast, some of the markings. We got that set up pretty quickly. So that takes care of your shaded base coat. And next up, we're going to get into some glazing. With the shaded base coat phase complete, we're going to get into some glazing. Now, I just use, these days, I just use water. You could use any kind of things like this. There's all kinds of flow improver. Reaper makes some. Vallejo makes some. There's a bunch of different companies that make this sort of stuff. I used to use it back in the day. There's nothing wrong with it. it. If I remember to use it, I use it most of the time. What I just have is water. I'm going to start off. I've got red and blue liner out here on the palette. 
And I'm just going to start with a few glazes. I'm going to start with is over the scales and some of the skin tone here. So I've got this over here. So here's my red liner. And let's get some of this blue liner going. And essentially, what this is going to do, this is going to establish those darkest darks. Remember how I said we're, we initially play in value range 4 through 7, and now we're getting into 8, 9, and 10. And pretty much these two together, that's our value 10. That's our darkest dark. But we're not going there just yet. Not going there just yet. And what we're going to do, looks like that's on screen. We're gonna we're gonna use gravity set. So I'm starting up here, starting up here at the top, working my way down. Might even inject a little bit of blue. That's gonna happen. Is see, I, I you can see it's trailing down here. What that's gonna do, especially because it's this liner paint, it it dries really nice and matte. You can really thin the heck out of it. You can just go crazy with thinning it man. it doesn't lose its pigmentation. It just maintains that pigmentation. It stays, stays dark. It, it keeps its color. And what, what this will do is bring out some of the shape of those scales. I don't completely lose my markings and let's say hey I want to bring some of that back. Got my sponges here. Can take some away if I want. I really feel like I need to. And I always have, see I got my glaze color always handy. And every so often grab a little bit of water. See now this is going to be a little bit more towards the blue. Now the reason why this is, it's not just to well match the pictures up on the screen, which we, you can see can have those those nice darks on them. But I have to think about what we did for the bases. So I'll just sort of leave that. I'm going to use a softer sponge here to take away just a touch here and there. Especially if I see it pooling in an area. Won't do more than that. But we've got our bases here. So I want that darker red against that more of a greenish part of the marble. And if I want to reflect the green light on this, if it's light, I have to get too, almost too intense with my greenish light. So the darker that skin color is, the less intense I've got to make my greenish reflected object source lighting. So it's a little bit like a chess match, kind of planning ahead. So here we're doing the same thing on the skin here, but see how that's kind of translucent there? I can even take another brush that's dry, take away some of that paint. See how it took some of it away? I've still got a nice batch of glaze color. And here on the face now, all of the shadows start to come back on the face. And now you have an actual, see how much contrast now we're starting to get between the face and that head crest slash helmet slash whatever the heck that is. See, I've always got I got that color available to me. My glaze colors, you can see how I shift it around. I'm just going to cover right over the top of that. Go back in. So this is what I used to use before, before I discovered the sponges. I have tons of these brushes around. So, and Glazing is not just for the skin. Here on the underside of the armor. And glazing doesn't have to be
complete coverage either. See, this is a partial glaze. I can even see, take some of this away. See, I'm already softening that edge, so I did a little bit of a light to dark there. Let's do the same thing on this side. And it's kind of reflecting some of that skin color. See, now I've got much more contrast there. I'm going to take away some of the paint. Let's see, I can sponge some of that away. And so just quickly, just a few brush strokes. We've established a nice a little bit of light and dark there. I think I've got good. Still have some of my ochre color left. I'm gonna, as I let that skin dry a little bit, I'm gonna go after this bow here. I'm gonna go after this bow. Let some more, some more red. But I'm gonna stop short of this little tail thing right here, and back to something that's a little more along the lines of yellow ochre here and get down into the more the reddish color so I'm trying to let gravity affect this but also make it so you can see what's going on see I want I want the water to flow flow down here And I know that for some people this is just, oh my gosh, it's this is so messy, there's no layering. Well, we sort of are. We're just doing it in a little different way. Here, let's... I want to get some darks on the end of this. And just pull some of that away. I'm going to get into my reds again. Do I have that more on screen? So this is actually a glaze also. That, that paint is pretty watered down. But guess what? I only targeted one little section there. So glazes, we used to think that, well, we call them washes. And that meant just kind of like a carpet bombing of, of just liquid paint everywhere. Nah, that's not quite it. Now here, okay, I was just about to say what I'm going to do is see, we need a darker color there. I was going to do a couple of things. See, it sets off that lighter highlight, but now it's going to let me reflect some of the lighter blue hair. What's that, the old phrase, the Bill Alexander phrase, you must have dark to show light. And we're showing light in a few different places by creating this dark. You can see I've been sticking with that same beat up craft brush this whole time. Because it's a little bit of a rough process. There's some of the yellow ochre because there's sort of a little bit of a top knot holding thing here. I'll just hit that a little bit. Hit that. Uh, okay, oh, I see there's still some more armor over here that needs to be. So let's let's get some stuff here on our this scabbard slash quiver thing. So I'm going to go with more of a blue here and hit these hit the arrows. Ah, there you go. It's going to be a little bit harder for me to reach, but at least you can see it. And see how that gets sucked in there? So without having to paint all of this stuff in, all of a sudden now, so I can do this on the other side, so that just, just seeps right through there. Now, I can pull this out. I just grabbed a little bit of the red. And so I'm going to get rid of some of the excess so we didn't lose our 
lighter color on these. We're still going to do more on the ends of these, but you know, why why sit here and, and layer up something as insignificant as those arrows over and over? When that's good enough to just set some context. Because, again, again how, how much of that do you want to be painting when you've got to paint maybe 20 of these? And you'll find out once we go over it with those those final highlights and such that you won't see it. it's going to look like you spent hours and, and layered it all up one little tiny gradation at a time when you actually didn't have to do that. So here's some of the yellow ochre. And I don't care at this point if a little blue even seeps into my mix, that's okay. You can see I'm even using my glove. As Usually I have my uh, socks pulled up here. So i got to hit the back of this now. And I'm sorry if I kind of bounce around a little bit. That's just mostly in shadow. We're just going to let that be covered up and be done with that. Because all we're just trying to do is get a little bit of color here. So we've gone over. Let's, let's hit the skin again because you can glaze in multiple layers too. It's not just opaque paint that gets multiple layers. So now I'm getting a little bit more of my blue liner mixed in with the red and I know this is where I want some of my super dark colors to be and here it's, it's barely perceptible I mean if that wasn't shinier you could hardly even tell where the light was and where the dark was And even a little bit under here. And, and the thing with the, you know, the whole metallic thing is you want super light color next to super dark color, some high contrast. You want hard edges kind of button up against each other. That's also pretty helpful. So see how I just kind of absentmindedly shaded that a little bit darker right there where my brush is pointing. I was, was kind of not even paying attention to what I was doing there. I just sort of instinctively did it. That's what I'm hoping will happen for you too. And, and the folks that have gotten back to me, they they show me pictures of stuff and feel free to do that. And they say, hey, check this out. And, and they show how they've adapted the techniques into their what it is that they do. Down here, we'll just do it because again, we're going to put some of that reflected greenish light on there. All right, and I, I guess too, I don't like to, I don't like to label. No, okay, here's one phase, and then we're done. Here's another phase. We do this, and then we're done. I really prefer to go back and forth actually now uh, I'll I'll go back to shaded base coat almost I'll go back to glazing I, I don't just stay with okay we finish this stage we don't go back no sometimes especially if I'm gonna make some kind of an adjustment or whatever and you'll probably see me make adjustments on the fly with this see now how much more if you go back to the previous segment you'll see just how much in no time at all how much shape we've added to this. So let's get a little bit of this blue liner, or not blue liner, sorry, verdigris blue. Mm, I'm going to go with a touch of that pale verdigris green. We'll make a glaze out of this. And, and glazes, again, they don't have to be as dark as our super dark that we did over here. 
So let's start doing some stuff on the hair. Again, I have to think about how gravity is going to work. I want to think about what's going to happen to this liquid. So part of it is holding it to where I can get to it. See, and I can wipe some of that away. You'll see this is less noticeable than some of the glazes we did. Less noticeable than the ones we did initially with the red liner and the blue liner. But th this stuff here is supposed to be relatively light. So I, I had my green in there. Guess what? I'm going to shift that now more a little bit towards the blue as I get down under here because that'll make it a little bit darker because with this big as big a blob of hair as it is don't want it to get too boring but then as I get back on top now I'm going to shift it towards the green so I'm constantly thinking of ways to make this be interesting enough I don't want to just be repeating the same. It's got such a huge block of color here. We want to get some variety in that. We want to. Sh we don't want to overpower the viewer and just say, "Hey, look, we just did a color transition here." But you want to kind of in a stealth way. Here's another. So we're gonna show you a glaze right here. Let's do some of this. So this is very watered down, really, really watered down. I have this, I want to make sure you can see it. So this is another type of glaze. And here, I'll get rid of some of this, pull some of this away. So see now how it has, it's got the yellowish color underneath it but now we've just put this little bit of a glaze over the top so it reflects the hair but there's not endless layers of paint there so this this is what I mean the flexibility of glazing instead of painting a bunch of layers of paint actually it, it saves a little bit of time so we're gonna do the same thing there see how that just sort of tinted that a little bit Tinted that just a touch. But we still have our, our red up here. We still have some warmer colors, but we still have our lights. But we just, again, we added a glaze. I'm going to do the same thing here. Slightest touch of it and take some away. So can you see that on the cobra head there? And I'm even going to see this the top half the armor here. See what I just did there? Touched a little bit there. So this is almost more of a verdigree effect here at this stage. But again, this is glazing, but guess what? It's a lighter glaze. See what I just did here on the this part of the bow where we've got some of the trim lining up. And I'm going to try and do the same thing here. Going to do a little bit of that here. And this is kind of a segue now because at this point we've done about 20 minutes of glazing and you don't want to get too involved. Now we're going to hit the, the mid-tones because we've sort of re-established where the darkest darks are. We get to the mid-tones and that starts to pull out some more of the details because all of this is the setup. And I'm going to go back to... where we were about 40 minutes ago and where we are now. 
So we'll move on to that next stage. And we're going to have some more fun with a little more detail. Start to work on the face. And I'll see you then. With the glazing phase mostly completed, again, we can go back and forth. I'm going to go into those mysterious mid-tones that I talked about. I'm going to start this off in a simple fashion here. I'm going to get some of that red old rust, I think it's called. Yeah, old rust. A little bit of this maiden flash. And we've got some of the verdigris pale green. Maybe even, even a touch of our other off-white. So you can see we've got our cool off-white, warm off-white. Now at this point, it, it's pretty, well, I don't have a second camera to be pointing at the palette anyways. And what I can do is, at this point, here, let's get our focus thing over here so you can uh, yeah, it's a little better focus, but do you really want to have a second? I I need room for my reference pictures. I'd rather have those up on the screen. But this lets you see is how I'm making kind of a light to dark here. Let's have a whole range of colors to work with. See, I can even go back over here to my Maiden Flash. Then I've got my green. And that's, that's, that's making a really nice gray. And if I feel the need to preserve that, you know, I'm just going to throw a cover over the top of it. So let's get our focus back to the miniature here. And let's start to mark off a little more of this pattern here. And even at this stage, this is pretty pretty, what do you want to say, transparent, translucent, not super, not super opaque. See, so we're starting to get a little more emphasis on our markings here. And the whole idea is to keep this somewhat darker because we want to Remember, we want to have that reflected green light there. But we also wanted this to have a little bit of color to it. So this is where I'm going to go back to my warmer version. Make sure you can see that. And see how it's not all that much different value-wise. Let's see how we're, it's almost like we're doing a little bit of non-metallic metal here. So we got darker there, lighter there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Take some paint away. I'm going to do some of that here. And even get a little bit of that on the side of that armor. We've got some skin tone here, but I don't want to get... I want that to be a little bit more on the cool side. Again, I don't want all of my lights to be the same intensity light. I don't want them to be the same amount of warm or cool. And, and this is the part of the figure where not not bringing out a lot of high intensity detail. But we're just starting to work out stuff like this. Eventually I'll get to a finer brush too. Sorry about the noise there. And here I don't I don't want to get too much with the marking back there. There's just there's enough stuff going on. You don't need to add more. And this is where I'm going to add a few other 
Maybe a few other trappings here. I don't want just a big old dark stripe. I'm going to see what happens when I break that up. And I may go back to what I had. That's that's the beauty of that being being flexible. So I'm gonna just get rid of that because I just I need to get get back into this a lot. So let's get a little bit of the that red skin color reflected in that. See, and if I want to now, I can get into a smaller brush. And this is where I can start to get into some more of the grayish versions of these skin tones here. So let's see, can you see that face? Seems so... I can go a little lighter here, you know, get a touch of green into that. Yeah, that's that's a little more a little more intense. And I'm just gonna do a couple more little lights here and that'll bring you back to that, that old blog post. And give you a show you what it is that we're doing with the face. So I'm gonna shift over here to the blog post, and I'll find you the face right here. So see how there's a little bit of green. Let me get my brush. We're doing the same green over that reddish type skin. I'm going to do this on the, on the shoulders and the arms here. Make sure I got a little bit of red with it. Over here. Because we've, we've, we've had plenty of dark. Now we just need to start to get a little more light colors. I was just starting to feel this was getting too... I want it to be darker. I don't want it to be darker absolutely everywhere. And you'll see... I mean, look at... This, this seems so light. But you can see that's definitely not a light color. That That's the, the point of that shaded base coat is to leave you the room to operate. So I'm going to, see I can even go back in, I can throw a little bit of warmer red in there. It, it lightens it up. It lightens it up to, see I don't even know if you can see, yeah I can hardly see what I'm doing here. This is on the uh, neck and shoulders back here. So again, in places where you pretty much can't see it, I won't get too won't get too involved with it. There's there's some of this that I just will have to paint off camera because it's too too difficult. You can see there's just there's stuff going on all over the place with these figures. Like this shoulder here, you can't even see what I'm painting because it's covered by the hair. And unless we had an x-ray camera, there's there's no way you'd be able to see through that hair to get to that shoulder. And I always say I have my, my colors here. I can go a stage lighter. But I'm going to get, I want to make sure I still get green in there. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit lighter now. And 
Man. I know it's a little bit tough for you to see. It'd be easier if I was working on just the, the helmet at this point. I think you could see that real easy. But I'm just I'm throwing some. These aren't final highlights. These are just somewhat lighter colors on the cheekbones. Over the eyes. Onto the chin. Nose. Shoulder there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put something that's much lighter and then you can really see where we're at. So I'm going to get rid of some of the excess. So you can see how much lighter we still can go. As we put a little bit of a highlight onto the scales. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to take my icy white. Let's see if I can get some eyes in here. So I wanted to wait. I didn't want to put those in right away. Because as soon as I do, then if I, I've had those in too early, I might be tempted to make my skin highlights a little bit too light. Here we go. We'll do a little highlighting of that. So we're, we're talking about mid-tones and everything. Well, this is part mid-tone, part object source lighting, because remember we've got this green base to deal with here. So, yep, I still got my pale green out there. I am going to go back and add a touch of this fluorescent green, ever, ever so, so slight of an amount, and especially on metal surfaces, things that should have a glint to them, Look at how intense that is, but we don't want it that intense. So by adding this other color, knocks it down just a touch. And since this armor is going to be pointed towards that, towards the base, this is that reflected light. It's going to make it look a little bit more like metal. See how we've got that green under there? And it's going to form a little bit of a contrast to all of the other more yellowish type colors. So we'll do a little bit of it here on the that part of the armor. And it's nowhere near a bright highlight. It's just an indication, just a hint. Let's do the same thing on our little rattler down here. on the underside of this tail. Same thing on the underside of this part of the tail. And I water this down. And let's I think you can see this. The thing about the fluorescent paints is that they are pretty translucent, so that's handy, that's good, because we don't want it to actually cover we don't want it to cover super intensely. We just we want a again a hint of this. And if you're again you're doing this to twenty, thirty figures, whatever it is, even if it's just fifteen. I think you can yeah, I think you can see what I'm doing here. Just adding an indication. I don't know how intense or not I want it. I can even put the figure on the base. You know, to see, okay, is, um, once it's on the base, I may say, oh boy, I need to make it brighter. Or I, I may say I need to tone it down. 
it's just a whole lot easier to get to this. I think as you can see, when it's like this, it would have been a little more difficult if this was sitting on a base. And see how I let that, this is the beauty of the fluorescent paints, is that they are pretty translucent. By adding a little bit of water, thinning them down, you get even more translucent. And we'll just do the sides of these scales here. Again, there's only only so much I can reach here on camera for. I wish I could do every little tiny thing, but I think at a certain point you would kind of okay. I see what he's doing. You, you, you've held a brush before. You can see it off enough and go, ah, okay, yeah, I, I can do that. It's, it's, sometimes I repeat things just to, so you don't have to maybe go back, you know, and, and do as much rewinding. It's, it's just. For right now, it's a little bit of an indication of that green. Now you know why I didn't get too involved in painting stuff down here. Because I've already, I knew these reflections were going to happen. Ever so slight of a reflection. Because those are going to get toned down when you start to see the lighter colors. Painted on the, the markings in the skin. So see here, even on the... These arrows, the, the bottom sh sides of the shafts. Maybe even a little bit on the hair there. So let's get the... So we got our bow here now that we've got those darks. See how ever so translucent that is? That's basically a little bit of a glaze there. We'll hit this. And the more reflections you put on something, and it starts to look a little bit more shiny. So see here on the underside of the hair, this not only does it give there a little bit of there. I think you can see it's a little more of a greenish tint, so we're getting some variety in that hair color. And sit a touch of green here. I think you yep, you can see that. A little touch of green here. And on the skin tone again, just ever so it's not gonna take off most of the paint from the brush. Just do a little bit. I don't don't want to get too involved with that much reflected green. It's just supposed to suggest that it's there. That's all. And since this has more of a, you know, there's a little bit more to this, well, we have to make sure there is, if there's one that's like got all those runes on it, where here it is. You know, you're not going to have quite as much reflected light from that. There's just there's not as much of the pattern there. So it makes, this is part of that planning out, planning everything out. And touch of green there, maybe a little hint there. So with, with that, like maybe let's bring out the, the bow a little bit more. We've got the armor. We got a lot of bright lights on the armor, but I'd say we need to do some work on that bow. I'm just trying to get my a little reflected lights here. A little bit of touch of green there. And 
can see we've got a lot of our light colors out. Let's go back to our clear yellow. Throw a little bit of that yellow ochre slash griffin tan out there. And this, now you see how much more pure that is. Just making sure that's on camera. And we start to refine some of these things a little bit. Start to think of some reflected light. Start to think not just that that whole light on the top and, and then darker in the middle and then reflect the light and maybe have it be as graduated as possible. So, so this is a little more of the clear, clear yellow. And that's a better angle for you. So I want to get the top edge of that and then get over here and on this bow start to work with some lighter tones and you'll, you'll see if I throw a little bit of the maiden flesh in there what that does is it makes the, that clear yellow a little more opaque and you'll see it's going to give you a more intense highlight now See the difference there? See how I'm just, I'm working in a line that kind of runs along here. I, I, I turn this around. And we've got our cobra here. If I just do a little bit of a connected light here. So now you've got, see, that's just not light against dark, but you've got that bluish tint. And you've got the yellow next to it. Right there. Yeah, we need an edge. We need some edges over here. Can you even see that? That, that bow is in the way. See what I'm, I did there? I added a few little, some dots here, almost like a broken horizon line. And here along the tail. Here along that edge. And here. So that, that light's still pretty intact. And I also want to do the same thing over here. And I'm sorry, I just bashed the camera. And let's go back to some Some of our yellow ochre here for this part of the bracer slash gauntlet. And then there's some, some straps over here that I'm just gonna not quite sure how much we want to bring those out. I'll see what I can do on the scabbard slash quiver. How much of that actually shows up or is blocked by the hair. bring out a few little edges here and I want to lose my I'm going to change the green here a little bit so this green is going to almost be a little more yellowish so we have plenty of cooler greens good I think you can see yeah I think you can see that so that's a little different. That's a little bit 
warmer there. See, we're getting a little bit of underside to that blade. And if I say, oh, now, don't like any of that, and just wipe it all away. That, that's the, the beauty of this, is the flexibility. And most people, what they say is they can relax a little bit more with their painting because they they know they they can adjust see look at how that was that was nowhere near a light color here we want to we want to hit some of these feathers right back to these feathers So that's why we didn't, that's why I just put a glaze over the top, because I knew I could just paint those in later on. These are going to be in shadow anyway, so I don't want to be too, too intense with those. Leave that be. Go back to my skin tone a little bit here if I've still got, yeah, I still have a little bit left. I want to delineate that neck a little bit. That's it, yep, yeah, I think I'm on the screen. So I want the the arm to stand out from the armor just a touch more. And then I see here, I'm speaking of armor, I've got to do some stuff over here on this side of the gauntlet. Up here. Goes over that. I don't want to wipe out all the neat stuff we did there, but I've got kind of a funny edge here. And see how that's uh, semi-translucent there? So I just went after that, soften that edge. I can go back into it again. So where I had kind of a funky thing, now that's gone. And let me Grab a little bit of this bluish color here, the, the verdigris blue. Go and grab some of the yellow ochre. And I think that's about where you can see it. And I wanted to get a little more of the greenish gray onto the, the bow here. But not everywhere, just in some spots. You just, I kind of have to be willing to add and subtract and add and subtract. Which, when when you set this all up with your shaded base coat, so let's let's not get too bogged down in just the metals. Let's. Get back to some of the markings here now that we've got that finer brush out there. See just how light we want to go with these. All right, what do we got here? And this is where. This is what I kind of envisioned as these sort of, see it's a broken up pattern, it's not a, not a pure clean line. Got a little bit of diamond inset in there. And 
and I can always do a glaze over the top of that to tone it down. Where's my, here's my color again. But all the while, making sure I don't get too, too intense with this because it'll compete with too many other things. So if I, if, if I had obviously many hours more, I could do, I can, I can do, pick out more individual scales if I want. But the whole point of this again is to show you how to make doing some more fun things on your units feasible. And even just that right there, that's because what, what I've seen usually of the, the GW versions of these, they, you know, they kind of painted this one color and then the next, this part another, and then the back layer of scales another, and there's not, there's not a real true pattern to it. Now that I've got this lighter color again, I want to do some lights and things like the fingers so what I'm going to do is fill in some of my blanks here some of the areas that you just can't see on camera let a few things dry and then we'll get back with I don't want to say the final phase, but where we get even more into the smaller bits. You can see now we have a little bit of our lighting done. We have some more, some more of our metals hit. We've got some more of our pattern established. So we'll get to that next segment in just a second. With the mid-tones done and more areas established, it's time to work into some, some more details. We need details. We also need some context here. And that's how I'm going to grab some of my that ice white color. I'm going to actually throw a little bit more of that. I think it's the maggot white. And remember our, our other seafoam green that we had here. It's that mint green or whatever. And I want to go back to the hair because we, we worked on a bunch of other things and don't want the hair to be forgotten because that needs some light colors too and that's going to have a bearing on everything else. And you'll see, see how we bring this down here all of a sudden now that starts to stand out a little bit. I don't want to get too too much on the undersides of the hair yeah I don't, if I start getting all kinds of highlights on the undersides of things and it's not quite going to translate so well this is also where clumps of hair start to be strands of hair so we got clumps here now I can start to pick out strands Uh, I don't want to get too hung up on one area. I don't want to get too hung up on the armor or the face, the hair, the bow. You try to make sure you move around the miniature. And 
it also because uh, we we used to do in the early days when we were doing our painting it was when it was all layers you're painting five to ten space marines whatever it is and you're just hoping that that paint layer you know you, you started with something that was darker and you're working it lighter and lighter and lighter and all you can do is hope that by the time you get to the you know, past figure number seven that your color is going to hold together inevitably it just it would dry or you just run out of it you thought you had enough to do all 10 but you didn't quite have enough to do all 10 and that then you're kind of stuck and you have to go back and try and match colors here there, there's less to match because you did those glazes and by doing the glazes you essentially you mixed your own color and it's a lot easier to to match previous batch because well what if you don't get to to paint on those figures again for a while I say I just I sort of strengthen the blue right there and do this in, in a few places so you can see how I work back and forth. I, I was working with the lighter color, and now I'm and now I'm back to my darker blue to try and refine things. Again, some of this I don't know how much you can you can actually see of what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna get a little bit of blue here. and repeat that some of that blue on the on the bow there just it gives it instead of just being a wooden bow there's maybe some, a little more something a little more going on with it and same thing here a little bit of that blue I think you can see it here where my brush is pointing, where I've got that blue. I'm going to do some of the same things here on our snake head. But also, remember we've got all these liner paints. we got red liner and blue liner. So I think I just put some, going to get some red liner out here. Then we can work on some other darks, make some, some details a little more crispy. can work on some of our markings because we worked on the lighter side of the markings. Let's try and work on some of the darker sides of the markings. And every so often try, try and break up that line if it's too too regular, too intact. I might even need to, you know, widen up some of these things, change their shape. And back here, yeah, I might even just do a little bit of a glaze of something here on the quiver needed a little more of a shadow there so we're supposedly long past the glazing phase but yet we're we're still finding that glazes can be handy and these these are some of our deepest darks here I know there's a bit of a rune on the chest here I'm just going to try and find that with the glaze. See if I can pick away some of the edge and still leave. Yeah, so see, I still got my little rune in there now. I had no idea where it was. I just did that little bit of a glaze to bring it back. You know, I can even try and see if I can. Well, I'm going to 
grab a different brush for the eyes slightly different brush because I just noticed when I'm trying to do it here on camera I cannot get it into the my magnifier like quite the way I need it to and here now these fingers eh, looks like yep I got them there there's just no separation now there's a little separation and on this these front uh, parts of the scales all right like so over here on our piece of armor and gonna throw a little bit of a glaze over that for right now Is at a certain point too. After after doing some of these things, I actually will want to get this off the base, or off of here, and put it on the base. And then that's where we do some of the the final matching up of the, of the figure to the base. All right, so let's, I'm going to add one little quick dark over here. A little bit of a dark there. Same thing on the snake head here. And let's see if I can get you some eyes. That's this is why I really enjoy the liner paints because they're really really dark, but they can be really really thin. I'm make sure I don't have any paint on my hand here. I think if I hold this upside down, I can get the proper angle on it to see it, and so can you. see you can thin that down kind of center it and the goal is to attach that iris to the upper eyelid like that. So I'm going to go back to my post here, slide it down, and you can see how the eye, it's, it's kind of anchored on that upper eyelid. And I can still Do some delineations here. So let's see if I can get the other eye and still keep it pointed to where you can see it. Ah, uh, looks like looks like you can. And. There you go. So see how that, that little pupil there is anchored to the eyelid. Gonna add some shadow to the lip there. And now I'm gonna grab some of this nifty blue here. 
see if we can put a little bit of interest on the face here. And this is above the eye. Basically, almost, I don't want to say blue eye shadow, but just some blue. Because every, everything on the, the skin is just so, there's so much of that reddish purple there. Don't want it to get, get looking boring. Yeah, just a little bit there. And now... Don't want that to get too bluish, but let's see what happens with... Just trying to change... Change up a few things here. And I want to see what this looks like down here. Yeah, see, see what I just did? Add a little bit of blue to that mark. It was all starting to look too much the same. So this is that. That's the adjustments that I was telling you about. The little changes here and there. Those little changes that can really add quite a bit. See, there's another one here. So I, I will go in and, and clean up some areas. Again, stuff that mostly you can't, you just can't even see on screen at all. Or it's just not going to, it's so small, it's hard for you to see. One thing I will do is grab some, some white here and show you a few things. Because remember how we talked about just not dipping into the white right off the bat. Finding other ways of establishing your lighter colors. Nowhere have we used, we have not used white yet. And when we finally do add a few touches of that, boy, it's going to make a big difference. So we have a, let's see, we got a little more of a, a little more of a face established here on this. A little more of an evil look there. And on the, this is kind of a piece of some kind of leather something or other here. We can get a little bit of a light on that. I don't want it to look gold. I'm going to put some lights here on the skin, the regular skin in this area. So let's grab ourselves just some plain old, plain old white. If I can locate it, here it is. So that means just, just pure white. That's all it is. I'll throw a little bit of this out here, and you'll see by saving this to the end. Uh, I'm not telling people don't ever use white. Nothing, nothing like that. Just say keep that off the palette until you're kind of ready for it. And you'll see the difference that makes it a little bright highlight there. Another one here where we've got this dark rune here. So see how that starts to stand out a little bit more. Same thing with our Head crest there. You 
even along our bow. I've got some lights we can throw here. Almost make it a little bite like it's somewhat burnished or whatever. So by just hanging on to this white, now that gives me some nice bright highlights to use. Now we've got our scabbard over here. I can put a few touches of lights on the dagger. See here on other parts of this armor, we still have parts of the head crest that can get some of these lights. Right here next to the, to the cheekbone. See the difference that makes versus that. But I also still have my darker colors out here. And I say I need to reestablish this, this dark here. Now you can see that's another thing you can't really see. Because the bow sort of got in the way. And speaking of the bow, I still got my clear yellow. We'll combine that with some of the white. Looks like, yep, I think that's that's on screen for you. So all of a sudden that stands out more. This starts to stand out more. These top edges just start to get a little more shine. And that extra little touch of shininess, you know, these sort of bright spectral highlights helps you get your gold effect. Or really just a metal effect, it doesn't have to be gold. So, you know, you can do gemstones for your eyes on your snake bow here. But this is that's another case where maybe you do some of the other ones and you see what they've got. Because if this is not supposed to be a unit champion, well maybe you don't want to do quite that much of a fancy effect on a bow. Maybe you do. But it's it's usually best to can be patient. See, we've got plenty of different little colors here on our scabbard now. So sorry if I'm not talking quite as much. I'm actually trying to, believe it or not, hold my breath as I do some of these because that, that sort of helps to steady the hand and the brush a little bit. And as I'm trying to get myself some, that's what I'm looking for, a little. Now for some of our yellow. And, boy, I don't even know if you can see this at all. I'm just going to see if I can sneak in. Bit of a lighter color. In here, that's it. 
Again, you can't really even see what I was just doing there. This is, I'm sure, blocked by the bow, so I apologize for that. So what I'm going to do is actually gonna take this off of the, take it off of my little dowel rod here, put it on the base, and I might have actually not been showing the, the right base, so we'll see how that goes, because then we might want to do some more stuff with the green and other things. Alright, so we will be back. With this mounted on the base and some final thoughts and effects. So I managed to find the correct base and I can put a little more, maybe a tiny bit more of the green there. See because how we got the design there we could reflect a little more green on there. But I did sort of play around with a few things. So and there's all of the ice blew up in the hair. So I actually brought it down here. So I added some of the ice blue to these markings. And that sort of lead thing, and I connected it this way too. So I add some that light blue here. It almost gives the scales a little bit more of a shimmer. So here's, here's a little bit what I was doing. Here's some of that ice blue mixed with the... I've got sort of grayish purple color here. And just a few. You get work in here underneath the, the undersides of the scales to give them a little bit of backlighting. Even here on see the top of the, the ridge line here of the scales. A few little highlights there. And even can you even see this? I think I can. Yeah, I think you can sort of see it. So here, this needed some shape. These are the things that you don't even really notice until all of a sudden you look at it and you say, ah, you know, like this needs just a little more. A touch of whatever it just wasn't and and these see I'm just adding a little more I'm gonna get my maiden flesh out here so I can get that even a little bit lighter maybe and can you see I think you can see it See, these, these are the little course corrections, and now what's going to happen over the... I'm going to try... It's either going to be a few episodes, or it's just going to be a longer longer than this. I don't, I don't know if it really makes a difference if I split up four more hours into three episodes, or if I just kind of do it all as one long episode. So the next one will probably be a longer video or just the video split into a couple to make sure that it's it's viable for me uploading it because that's, that's the other thing too is the rendering and upload times take a while so it might be kind of one long thing just broken up into two more manageable parts uh, you can see I'm, see I'm getting a little put a little sort of belly button there. That was not there. wasn't actually sculpted on there. It's just something that I added because I felt it needed it. Or maybe it was there and I just didn't notice it. It is very possible that it was there the entire time and I just didn't notice it. And you can see it's, it's still possible to paint it even on the base. Because I got stuck on my dead paint jars here. And I can still add little touches to it. 
Maybe maybe I will throw out a little touch of that fluorescent green here. Not a lot. Doesn't doesn't take doesn't take a lot. A little bit goes a long way with the fluorescent. So here we go. And I just pinned it on onto the base with my paper clip there. Think yeah, looks like you can see that. So, so I'm just gonna add a few, few bright shimmers. But this is this is an area where there's not gonna be so much because it's just the runes here, so they wouldn't reflect so much or, or project as much light. It admits why I'm glad I just. Said, oh, you know, I want to see what this actually looks like here before before we get a little too crazy with that. And so here, I think you can see how I brighten that up. And do the same thing here along this bottom edge. And what I want to get to, but when I start to do the the rest of the figures, it's I don't want to just repeat what we did here endless times. So there's something like the champion figure. You now this one has the the dragon, and and some maybe have an easier to see face, or maybe we change up this marking a little bit. So I think that's what I'll focus more on instead of just repeating this four times. Because do you really? You could just watch this four times. So what I'm going to do is, is pick out things that are special about each figure and especially if they're on a different type of a base. You know, the ones that have a little more opportunities for reflections, we'll do those. So I hope that this was informative for you, that it, 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 it gives you ideas because that, that's all I want to really do. I had a few little green touches in there. Just want to throw out some new possibilities that you, know, you may take this and, and do something completely your own with it, which is kind of the idea. It's, it's not at all about saying, okay, you must do things this way. It's more like, well, what if you just, what if you gave this a try? Tried something a little bit different, a little different approach. Or maybe you've been on the cusp of actually doing something a lot like this. And now you say, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can, I can incorporate that into what I do. So you, you can, you can see the difference that made there. So now it's a little more integrated into this base, but I'm I'm really glad that I waited, because if I had, you know, that would have been okay. But back here, that would not have been a good plan. Not a good idea to have so much of the glowy stuff there. So sometimes, just a little bit of patience. Is that sometimes I see people, uh, they they want to paint the entire army in, in one layer and be done with it. I suppose, too, the other thing I want people to do is, is just get more enjoyment out of this. I think I've, I've probably mentioned it in several of my painting things lately. It's just, I think one of the things that concerns me, I see so many people that just say, I just, I'm not, I don't want to paint any more miniatures. I'm bored, not inspired. And hopefully this helps to maybe re-inspire some people to get back into it if they've gotten away from it a little bit or keep you from getting away from it there's that too i want to want to keep you involved in your painting so again these little little touches here you'll you'll probably notice someone in the in the photos because obviously the, the photos of this appear in the the opening credits and the closing credits, so have them on the blog for you to look at. 
So again, there's our first, our, our colored test figure that we established. All right. We've got it on our base. See what she looks like. So we will catch you on the next episode where we start to take things like the champion, mess with the dragon, and, and a few other things. And maybe change up the markings on a few to also designate them as a champion or whatever. So thanks a lot, and I will see you on the next one.